On today's Nonsense Wars production, we look at a new thing, but not necessarily a new set. LEGO recently launched the Build Together Beta, a mechanism in their instructions app that allows multiple people to build collaboratively. Jay and I regularly build sets together, but it usually involves having a parts finder and a parts Placer rather than building anything in parallel. While Build Together only works for a few sets right now, we naturally wanted to give it a try, and we purchased a copy of 60291 from a local store. You, of course, have to update the app to the latest version, which we couldn't do on some older devices. My old iPhone and Jay's old iPad did not work. When viewing instructions for a compatible set, you can start a build together session by scanning the QR code on the physical booklet. You can add more players by scanning a new QR code generated by the first player. We did want to see if each booklet's QR code is unique and what kind of data the code contains, but that is something for a future investigation. Let's take a quick look at 60291. It costs $60 and has 388 parts, making it a lot more expensive than 10 cents per part. Still, it does have four minifigs, a lot of minifig accessories, many of which have extras, and considerable large parts, including the new road plates, to justify that cost. Everything comes in five numbered bags, a sixth bag for the biggest parts, and a seventh for the sticker sheet and the instruction booklets, a big one for the house, and a tiny one for the car. We picked this set partly because we wanted to look at said road plates. 60291 includes a 16 by 16 and a 16 by 8. You can fit various tiles, though the set only comes with blank ones, into the interior or exterior notches to join or decorate the plates. The internal notches also have holes to help remove tiles. The digital instructions have the same look and feel as the printed ones, but they break down the steps even further as part callouts now have a separate page. Each player gets their own set of steps and builds their own sub-assemblies, occasionally passing a build to another player. This seemed to work quite well in the beginning. Each player had something to do, though some sub-assemblies seemed quite strange, and we encountered a couple passes as well. Unlike the printed instructions, the build-together ones don't go through the numbered bags sequentially, though they do indicate which sub-assemblies come from which bags. This means you have to manage a bunch of open bags or find a way to sort and store the parts, and this can turn into a bit of a headache, uh, perhaps even more so with a bigger set. The real problem to us at least, materialized toward the end. One player got a hang in there, indicating that they had nothing to do, and it persisted for the rest of the session. That player still occasionally had to pass a previously constructed assembly, but they basically had nothing to do while the other player built the rest of the model. We did not intentionally try to trigger this, and I even think we mostly built at comparable speeds. 
putting someone out of work with just two players feels pretty bad, and it kind of defeats the purpose. The app even acknowledges when a player completes a subassembly, so it clearly knows their progression, though it apparently can't do anything with that. Perhaps this gets less bad with a bigger set or with more people, but I think we had a pretty simple base case. We also don't have a clear mechanism to give feedback, though I'm sure the app must collect data in the background. Eventually, the model gets completed and both players get a yay screen. So let's take a look at 60291 itself, which feels pretty typical for a contemporary city set. At first, it seems a little simplistic with a touch of juniorization, but upon closer inspection, it actually has considerable detail and cute features. The dark blue roof has solar panels from the IDEAS ISS. The top floor has a bedroom with some Ninjago memorabilia. The second floor has a surprisingly large bathroom with a shower and a toilet, along with a small room with a guitar and an amp. The first floor has a living room with a game console setup and a kitchen with a stove and a huge blender. It also has a carport with an EV charger. The ground floor also has a yard and a driveway, both of which have some greebles and some activity. We found the rooftop barbecue the strangest feature. Why did Lego put it there when the picnic bench sits in the yard? Furthermore, you can access all the floors from the rear, but they still stack and unstack easily, almost as if the designers intended for you to rearrange them. Finally, we took a look at the printed instructions, and we actually noticed something interesting. The existing subassemblies seem to match the ones in Build Together. Despite the weirdness of some parts, it seems built together does not dynamically generate anything, only distribute existing steps to different people. Perhaps players run out of work when the app runs out of allocable subassemblies. Overall, we still like this idea, despite the flaws in the beta. I hope LEGO can fine-tune it and make it work with more sets. Build together for Technic sets would be very interesting. We might look at this again if anything changes significantly, but on that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day. We can actually see what the data is in the QR code. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, do you want me to try it? Uh, sure. I think if you just use the camera app, it'll work, okay, right? I, I don't know. It's a URL.